great collegiate esports action for you and playoffs is around the corner so you know that these teams are doing everything they can to make the cut let's get into it Starting us off, it's a POTG for POST as Hivezer spins to win and keeps his team alive in their series against the Colonels. So they needed that victory, they needed to know that the reverse if it's going to take place. Hostess are with the best. At number 7, Floppy's got a show to put on for us as he juggles Sen Sen around the stage. Off stage. How will they make it back on? Just immediately opting to go for the ledge, eating an uphill and Telly not going to uh, be dying quite yet. He is quite a hefty boy, but what a follow-up. Yeah, ping-pong with It's overtime out the gate for our number 6 clip and Ebest Drew hangs at us a little to the left to clutch it up for Farmingdale. It over one has indemnity to work through now to flip over him. Chance. Oh, it's top of the box Ooh. for MC Drew. That's a goal game one winner for Farming Dale. Yeah, that E best Drew right here. Fantastic shot reception, or that pass reception, I should say. After Otto puts this across the top right here. Up next is Curious George with the Cura Ace to clutch up the round for Keen. And yes, the editors came up with the name of this clip, not me. Behind it, and now you're going to be talking about a bolster to both points here. It would probably be in the best interest of Keen to go ahead and just save the weapon. Not exactly sure how their guns are looking, how their economy is looking, excuse me. But this just seems so unfavorable for them. They're sort of making it work, mind you. Curious George, he's going ahead and giving it the old college try. He's going to make it an ace, but does he have the time behind the snake fight? He can go ahead and stick on it. And by God, again, Keen just cannot keep getting away with it. They're disjointed. They're scrappy as all hell. It's ye old faithful in our number four spot as Putnut and Kofi toss out a huge grab dragons to flip the point and secure a map number one for Nickel State. We're going to have to bait out this uh, immortality. First, we're going to see that committed on the pack of the grab, but the dragon strike is massive. A four shot for Kof. And with that, the Colonels will take control of the point once again. Now, this might only be our number three clip of this week, but you guys have to check out this play from Nat Leopard as he pulls off these ridiculous ridiculous moves to juggle the ball right past the defenders of Central Missouri and into the net. It's possible setting up a counter-attack potential, but Fan Shui here and not Leopard. What old not Leopard! They have families! Stop it! They beat all <laughs> three defenders! I finally figured out why it's not Leopard. It's not Leopard because it's messy! Messy! With the dime, the dish, the left to the
probably one of the smartest plays we've seen in a while. Now UNM's Wicked Pro, after finding the spike on A, decides to ult and immediately rotate out after getting the info that the rest of the attackers are mid. What happens next? We'll just watch. A bit frustrated about that one. Oh, and this is a great play going around from the smoke from the belt. They have the perfect opportunity. And once that falls, everyone will be revealed. They'll be hit with the decay. This could be huge. Yes. Mishiro. Got on, on the zip line. Oh. Wicked gets two. Another 4K for Wicked, who is playing out of their mind. The 500 IQ play. You knew that it was a weird angle to have that Viper spit. You knew that they were going to check everywhere inside and all right number one let me break this down for you series three last man standing the anchor in atata as he somehow manages to bring illinois wesleyan back from being in a 1v3 for this series big lead here for wayne state but we'll see you know atata is not out of the count just yet and they might be looking i mean they're definitely looking to take this away with the three stock and they can't play too risky okay we see the mpk flash there they're gonna make it back to ledge we also saw a pretty hail mary forward smash there at a low percent at that the risk reward on that is a little skewed Ooh, look at this jab reset into the forward smash what a beautiful combo they just feel confident in their team and there's nothing more that i love with that but the mess is already trying to make a statement saying that you, sh you should have brought the oh person who could goodness. take the stocks first. That is amazing right there. We saw the PK fire. Multi hits goes for the downer. There's an off stage air dodge. Suddenly, this is looking very bad for Young Link and potentially Wayne State as a whole. I don't let them grab you. You still got to be careful. Mess is a threat no matter where they are on the stage. Nice rising fair to you know, kind of even that out. Good blade beam to catch the PK fire. Maybe the PK fire is in reaction. There's a climb hazard. This is Ness's time. That forward tilt takes it. And IWU, Illinois Wesleyan Titans takes it over Wayne State College. 2-1 across the set. The final game going two stocks to Atata over Chef Louis zero stocks. Oh my goodness. What a heart wrencher. Well, there you have it. What a crazy week it was. And honestly, I know it's only going to get even crazier as we move on. Now, the competition is fierce not only just in Division A, but even some of these open division matches are going the distance and coming down to the wire. Now, as always, if you want to stay up to date on everything, give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore esports. Or if you guys want to check out the matches live, we broadcast Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. One.
7. Once again, a special shout out to our partners at Esports U for providing additional coverage of our matches on their network. But I mean, that's it. That's all I've got for you guys this week. We're almost we're only two more weeks out after this. And I mean, I'm really curious to see how the playoffs shakes out this year. But don't go anywhere, guys. Come back right here every week, every time. Same day, same time. You guys know how it runs. And don't go anywhere. I'll see you guys next time. My name is Jacob. I'm 21, and it's my first year in this school. I've already been to community college for the last two years, but I transferred here. It's a whole new program. What made you transfer? I wanted to do something different. I already have an uh, associate's degree in business administration, and I wanted to come to this school and do audio production, which is like uh, music engineering and stuff. So what do you want to do with that? The main goal is to... Uh, work in like music studios and like help with like the music creation process anywhere kind of in the audio recording realm is fine with me and do you have a go-to genre of music that you like i don't know it's it, it, it's it's uh it's all over the place to be honest yeah no judgment <laughs> it's, all over, it's all over the place so how do you like the program that you're in now do you like your school yes do i really do like this school and with this whole esport thing i think it just made it a little bit better because like it's it's new, you know, it's, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. it. Not everyone, you know, has it. And mm -hmm. it's something that I'm very interested in and have been interested in for a while. You didn't have esports at your old school? I want to say there was a club, but I didn't know anything of it. This is your first time being part of a collegiate esports team then? Yes. And how do you like it? Like, how do you, how do you feel about it? I love it, to be honest. Growing up, I played baseball. I threw senior year of my high school. I wasn't like doing anything traditional sport wise in college it wasn't until this year that i was like oh because like i saw it like i saw, I saw like a poster hanging up i was like oh esports let's let's just go do it i really like it though it's something cool something new my friends like it so I'm like cool what are your games that you play i play valorant for the school on like the side i ca i've been playing fortnite recently and i play osu sometimes so how does it feel being a part of the team? Do you like your team? Yes, I do. I pretty much made friends with all of them. Obviously, I have met them. Since a lot of things have been remote recently, I still have met them, and they're very nice kids. Our arena is being built at the moment. The Valorant mm -hmm. team should be getting in there first, so I'm very excited to play in there. What do you do to improve yourself in-game, and do you take that strategy into your everyday life as well? For in-game, I try and play every day. That's kind of mm -hmm. like the one thing I try to do. Even if I have like a little burnout from it, maybe from like the previous day, I still try to get on and do something. Of course, you watch YouTube. There's a million of things that, did, uh, that you can watch on YouTube. I like to watch different content creators in the in that niche just to like inspire me to play a little bit more you know do i carry it into my everyday life i do i'm very into like music production there's a lot of things you can do like like the same thing you do it every day you follow you watch youtube in that niche you like you take things you learn and you apply it there's a lot of similarities of things like if you want to do something you 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 very much have to dive deep into that niche of things you want to do if you had to guess or just kind of spitball here how many hours a week do you think you spend gaming? Honestly, I've never thought about it. I'm on my computer almost every day. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> it's up there. Uh, between between playing with friends and kind of just doing stuff by myself, it's up there. Uh, you spoke about burnout when it comes to playing and you play every day. What do you do to kind of get yourself back into the zone or what do you do when you're experiencing burnout? It kind of goes back to like watching content creators. Like the people mm -hmm. I watch on YouTube, I just, I will I'll like I'll see if they post anything new or I'll just watch whatever they have and I'll get inspired to do it and I'll just be like all right well, time to hop on even if I don't not feeling it I'll try to try to do something. Would you say that there's anyone on your team that really stands out to you or kind of motivates you to play? Yes, one kid on our team's name's Alex. He is Diamond Two, Diamond One or Diamond Two in Valorant. 
So he's he's up there. He only really plays with us. He plays on his own, but he, he plays with us during games and sometimes afterwards. Trying to be at his level, I think, would be very the goal. So he kind of it, it kind of like inspires you to kind of like keep going. Anyone really, mm-hmm. anyone really that's higher ranked than you kind of inspires you to like. All right, you 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 wanna you wanna push yourself to be where they are, and that's right. kind of what I've been doing recently. There are there are people like that for you since this is your first time being on a collegiate team do you have any advice to people who may be looking to join a team or aren't sure if they should or not i say just go for it when i saw the poster in the school i was like maybe they have like you know balance team whatever at the time i was i kind of doubted my ability right i kind of doubted my ability because like i was a low rank i know i could hold my own in the game but i didn't know how i would like compare but i think you just have to go for it because if you don't how would you know if you don't go for it would you say that the people on your team helped you out yeah for sure i think people who are higher ranked than you are like they they teach you 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 obviously learn on your own but there's a lot of things that you can get that you can get taught from your teammates and just how they how they play Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this with me. I really appreciate it. There's so many other jobs as well that can translate out of this experience in esports. The the only path is not just as a player. Um, I think all of us are representative of jobs in esports, but it, it, it mirrors traditional sports in pretty much the same way. You've got you know, broadcasters, you've got production people, you've got marketing and sales and um, now NIL and and things like that. But um, really, esports is kind of a great accelerator uh, for a lot of new businesses that are coming up in the metaverse and Web3. And there's a lot of new technology that is going to be needed. And so these these STEM students that are also esports athletes are really the the future workforce and leaders of tomorrow. And, you know, us as well as all of our brand partners that we work with really recognize this. And I think that's really, you know, a key driver of why brands are in this space. They want to be part of building that future workforce and leadership and shaping it and supporting it. So, yeah, it's, 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 very, it's been a very interesting space to watch. And we, we offer such a big, uh, you know, we offer such a big counterpart to traditional sports also because when tra- it's a counterpart, but it's also the same is what I'm trying to say. Because it, it, when you're traditional sports and they're done after their two-a-day workout and they're done after their practice scrim, they're coming home to play Call of Duty and relax and put their feet up and get a drink and play video games. It grows their brain, problem-solving skills, uh, and, and their hand-eye coordination while they're home. Hand-eye coordination, if you're a football player, massive skill, massive skill. So Mm -hmm. um, it helps build those things while they're off the field. And then for us, vice versa, if you're an esports athlete, one of the errors I had growing up when I was competing in esports is that I was not active enough. I I played sports, I competed a little bit, but I wasn't active enough truly when I look at it. So that's one area that esports players can learn from in terms of activity and physical and the marrying of both. People say, oh, sports and esports, video games, not really. We're just kind of the tech industry's competitive uh, form of um, competition as to where traditional sports are more physical hands-on. So I believe in the marrying of these two sectors and that they actually live together while also being counterparts. Well, I think, I think then to speak to something about marrying, right, from traditional to esports, um, that to me speaks to this whole new thing, at least, again, from you guys, right, you guys have more traditional sports background, like Paul, Lee, Mike, um, and all of that, but I think let's talk NIL then, because I think that's something that I think is really interesting. That at least when I heard about it, right, of what we're trying to do with, you know, esports athletes, schools, programs in general, um, because it wasn't something you would think normally, right? You could understand, right, football player on the field, star quarterback, it makes sense, right? The guy is somebody that everybody knows on campus, whether you're, you know, whether you're on the team, off the team, or you're just going to the school, it makes sense. But I think you know nowadays. It's, it's not as common or people don't think that they could be somebody that their name is out there, right? Or that they know they're known, right? As, as we're growing the space, as we're, we're putting this together, it almost feels really interesting that, you know, star, your star entry, you know, your star entry in Valorant or your, your star forward on Rocket League, right? Whatever the case might be, now they can have NIL deals. It's a, it's a thing out yeah. there. And, and I think, I don't know, maybe Mike, you want to start off? But yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, thank you for teeing that up. So uh, I was talking for too long. I 
uh, I forgot to bring NIL into the mix. So it's a common occurrence, uh, occupational hazard. So I would say that, uh, so NIL for, for uh, I'm sure most of you watching understand what it is, but NIL stands for name, image, and likeness. Name, image, and likeness, that term has been utilized to describe the transition of traditional student athletes, NCAA athletes, and their ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. It went live July 1st, 2021, and it has continued over the course of the last 14, nearly 14 months now. Uh, it's an interesting term because it's been co-opted to describe the NCAA's approach to student athletes being able to make endorsement money or uh, be able to monetize any part of their name, image, and likeness, but it's been around forever, right? We've had athletes endorsing brands for over a hundred years. Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees was endorsing brands a hundred years ago, and it has continued onward from baseball cards all the way through now, where we have lots of different integrations of how uh, influencers can monetize their followings. So what I would say on the traditional side is it's still a very young space. There are a lot of stories out there regarding NIL that tend to focus on the negative or how out of control, I put in air quotes, it has gotten. But there is still a burgeoning marketplace for many more student athletes that are involved. About 17% of NCAA athletes are currently involved in NIL, but 65% more than that want to get involved and are curious how to get started. On the flip side, brands are challenged with a few different things in the space. There are 10,000 professional athletes in the United States. Once July 1st, 2021 hit, and you dump every NCAA athlete into that space, that's another half million. So brands that maybe didn't have a dedicated athlete strategy when there were 10,000, now have 500,000 plus that 10,000 to figure out how to activate who they are. That's a lot. I understand brands hesitancy in some instances, but I can tell you that companies like us are on a daily basis educating brands and student athletes as to the software you can use, the types of activations you can get involved in, and how to utilize your followings, or if you don't have to or want to be a social media star, other ways in which you can monetize it. Now, I know I described that under the umbrella of the NCAA, but I see it as being no different in esports. I think there are massive opportunities for people with followings to be able to use that and connect with brands. I think a company like us can help you to do that. And then beyond that, we can make sure that those transactions are safe for you. I think there are opportunities, not just at the individual competitor level, but at the program level to have a sponsorship go to that. I'm sure some of you out there listening and watching already have deals like that in place, but I think we can continue to enhance, augment those deals and make them more comprehensive and make them, uh, first of all, I think, Product deals are perfectly fine, but I think we can get beyond that and grow some of these deals to a greater extent. Paulie, thoughts on that? Yeah, um, you know, you, what you said is right. So I'll put it in for layman's terms here for just the esports players because I talk to so many of our yeah. athletes that compete in our CECC series that are currently still in college. And basically what, what, what when Mike Blewett says NIL, what he's referring to is just very simple. If a brand or any sort of anyone wants to use your school's name, name or your name or your brand or anything with you, there is a deal for you that can be put in place, whether it's product deal, whether it's a paid endorsement, you can, whether you're a macro influencer or whether you're a micro influencer, you can be paid for your services. So uh, most of the people, when I talk to them, well, most of the, I won't say people, college athletes, they are, uh, you know, intimidated by the word. They don't really know what it means. They've never done anything with it before. And that's what it means. Any single time a brand or anyone at all wants to use your name or do a, a deal with you or do so, some sort of activation with you or your school, that's basically what the layman's terms, the NIL uh, meaning comes from. And uh, it, it's evolving in this space. There are so many brands that want to associate with micro and macro influencers uh, and just get people involved with their products or their services. So all of you, you know, collegiate athletes out there that are competing in esports, uh, very uh, 
keep not only are we trying to broker those deals, but also keep your eyes and ears open and don't be shy or, or scared to take these deals because that's what I've heard the most is that most of the time they're just scared to take them. They don't know what they are. They don't know if they're locking themselves into some agreement or terms that they're like going to give their name away or something too. So uh, this is a really important space and it's how you're all going to physically make money and build your brands along with company brands. So it's really important to learn. And my, my advice is to just get your feet wet. Don't worry about shying away. Read the contracts and take some of these deals because growing your own brand is the future of what our, our industry is going to be, in my opinion. Exactly. And if you follow in the in the pro space, um, you'll see that uh, the pro teams are not only focusing on competitive play, but a lot of them are focusing on their brand and, and their cultural importance in the space. And so, you know, one of the things that we do also is help athletes build their brand, build their following. And that's part of what Paulie and Kyler are doing on their side when we do this behind the scenes training. And so, you know, building your brand, this is the creator economy. Uh, anybody and everybody can be anything they want to be. And so we just really want to be the conduit that supports that across the board. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I think so. With that said, thank you everyone for I think like great insights in terms of for any of you that were watching this and maybe had questions about you know what is esports U, what is CSMG, who are they, what are they doing, what are our plans, right? Well, you know, we 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 know we kind of tried to make a bigger splash in the spring, and we're excited to bring more stuff with you guys for the next year. But I think maybe as we close out here, I know we're we're slowly approaching on time then, but maybe let's go around the room with everyone here of just. What's one thing that we're all excited for for this next upcoming year? I know we touched on our plans and a lot of things, but if anyone had to speak, if you had to speak to just one thing of just what has you excited for for us as a company, for us as the collegiate or college esports space, right? Uh, what's one thing that has all of you guys excited? And maybe we'll start with Mike since our our traditional sports guy, and we'll let you like we'll let Mike speak. Sure. <laughs> sure. So uh, I would say many things on the traditional side, but. I'll focus on esports, and I'd say the thing that I'm most excited about going forward is after yet another year of us doing a round of events, I'm excited that more schools will understand exactly what we're doing with our regional uh, events and culminating in CECC and getting more schools involved. Uh, I think schools will be more excited to compete in our events because we've established it over the course of a year, and, and I welcome any and all conversations with getting people involved. I, I think for me, I'm most excited about like the schools and conferences, Mike, that's, that's amazing. And that's so exciting. I'm also excited about the brands that we're starting to be able to get involved in this. In our uh, Commissioner's Cup in last May, we had over 14 brands, blue chip brands participating in our event. Barbasol, Microsoft, CDW, Morgan Stanley, New Street, Air Force. Um, and so I think brands are, are really starting to get excited about being involved in college esports. And we're offering them a platform that not only gives them, you know, a big event, a big yearly event, but also uh, regular daily programming where they can have exposure in, in front of this audience. Um, that they, they want to build affinity for with, with their brand. So I'm super excited about seeing the brands get on board and, and help grow the space along with us. A rising tide lifts all boats. And I think that's probably one of our, our mottos here at CSMG and Esports U. We're growing our brand, but at the same time, we're also really growing the college esports space as a whole. And that's our goal for it to be a healthy ecosystem for all parties involved. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree there. And uh, I guess for me, uh, obviously always, you know, seeing the collegiate esports space elevate. Um, uh,
the lot of you. didn't exist when I was competing and just to see it now in literally within the last five years probably really come to fruition and start just blossomed out of nowhere and now becoming a space and seeing everyone schools players uh productions companies all elevate together it has been really really nice to see but if I was the most excited for one thing it would probably be uh the city where we're gonna land for CEC uh CC23 um I'm really excited to know where we're gonna be there's a lot of great cities I mean I I personally would love for it to come to New York Despite whether we got a positive bid or not, I wanted to come to New York. But uh, I just think the atmosphere uh, in New York when you throw an event here is just super magical, um, especially in the summertime. And But either way, I'm really excited to see where it lands. Tons of great cities, tons of great opportunities. And, um, yeah, who knows? And, and I think that's going to be the most exciting uh, process for me. Absolutely. Um, I won't speak to anything. I think I, I, I'm filling Paulie's job in this one because Paulie's more a panelist than this one. So, um, you know, normally, normally Paulie's the host, and I, I don't know. I think I, I, me personally, I'll just say something real quick. I'm just excited to keep telling your stories. If you're a student, if you're a program, um, let me know. Let us, you know, reach out to us. We just ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to tell your story, and I think that's what has me most excited because now I think we're getting to a point where people know us. People, I hope you guys trust us. And, you know, um, 
and we just want to keep keep expanding and growing the space. So with that, uh, Polly, I won't make you do the weird thing where you got to toss to yourself. <laughs> unless, unless you want to do that. I don't know. Actually, you, you, yeah, you might yeah. have a few way of doing this. Yeah, they all, all right. you know, let's yeah. test it. Yeah, okay. All right. How do you, you want to throw, throw yourself here? <laughs> well, that's going to conclude here the future of Collegiate with S uh, CSMG and Esports U. Thank you so much to Angela, Mike Blewett, and Kyler Tandle for hosting our panel. And now back to myself for the day three of the CSMG uh, Coaches and Directors Summit 2022. First, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, so my name is Caitlin. I'm a part of Farmingdale State College's eSports club. I am captain of the Valorant Green team. I am a second a uh, second semester sophomore at Farmingdale State College, and I'm 19 years old. Okay, do you like Farmingdale so far? Yeah, it's, a, it's really great. Uh, the program I'm in is very specialized, and it's not offered um, that often in the East Coast, so it's pretty nice. I enjoy it. And what's your major? My major is aerospace professional pilot degree. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Thank you. So is this your first time on an esports team? No. So I've been a part of the Valorant team for two semesters. And this is um, my third semester. And it's my first time ever being a captain. OK. Oh, that's awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like being a captain? So a lot of times I'm organizing the team, making sure everyone is properly set for upcoming games, um, getting scrims for our, our team, and kind of just making sure everyone is there, present, and possible, and able to play the games that we're going to you know, be participating in. We're participating in two leagues this semester, so it's kind of hectic. Oh, gosh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. How is it different for you as a player versus as a captain? Do you feel a lot of responsibility? I basically have the responsibility of choosing who, you know, really plays, what uh, type of characters everyone's playing and what positions and roles we are all doing, as well as um, being there not only as a team member, but also being seen as in a leadership role and having that sort of respect there and being able to delegate um, everyone's role in the team. So it's definitely a lot uh, more different, and my voice is most definitely her. So <laughs> I, I like it. I like being a, uh, a captain. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what games do you play, or what is your main game? I know you mentioned Valorant. Right. So um, I play Valorant, but um, I started off with Counter-Strike, and I really always have been interested in FPSs. So um, it, that background has always been there. So my transfer onto Valorant was pretty pretty easy. That's cool. What have you done to improve yourself in game over time? So one thing um, for my teams, especially, I have open communication where we're able to really give our constructive criticism without taking offense. And me as a captain, especially being uh, it being my first semester, I find it really important that everyone is able to come to me and communicate like, hey, Kate, I don't know um, how I feel about doing this, or uh, I want my voice to be heard about this specific thing. And um, just basically taking into consideration everyone's voice and having that open line of communication is really helpful. 
and that's something I find really important. Okay, and do you carry that strategy into your everyday life as well, would you say? Yeah, um, communication is really important to me, um, especially in aviation with crew members. You're always trying to communicate properly and efficiently to get the assigned goal completed, and that works in video games as well as in aviation. So um, I feel like it transfers very well, and I put my 100% effort in everything I do. I put 100% in um, the team, the leagues that we're participating in, communicating with um, opposing teams that we might be going against. Um, all those things, I take it really important and can transfer it very well into uh, everyday life. Can you tell me a little bit about what you think about CECC and just competing in general? It A lot of
UCF and it's really cute. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move down here. How do we feel? Yes. Odds for UCF, what are we thinking? They got it. No, we got this. Got we got this. We got this. Go Knights, charge on. 100 percent My friend Nick is behind you. He's gonna record it. Don't look at him. Don't you'll ruin the shot. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Come on. Oh, oh, let's go! Let's go! My smile's probably really creepy. I was just being weird. Oh, I love being in the shadows, though. Big shout out to the shadows. We could interview Dilly just because I think he's handsome. You weren't, you weren't supposed to hear it. Here's the thing about the event. Uh, I'm the greatest that's ever lived. Literally true. I know him. I, I think everyone knows that. I think everyone's aware of that. Hey, do you have a VIP access badge on? I actually have an all access. Oh, an all access. I thought it said VIP and access. Only, and that's only available for the best. <laughs> that's true. He's right. That's a main stage TO right there. I, if this goes live, I'm suing everybody it's all right a video of me the first clip is me saying don't put that in and then it was the first cut, 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 the, cut the cameras cut the cameras oh you're recording already great so this is gonna uh, this is Bay State versus UCF I believe something that we saw yesterday on day one of the tournament but instead we're gonna have that run back here I think they're fighting for a spot in grand finals anarchy one of the best Greninja players in the United States currently struggling against a Terry Terry notorious for that DLC privilege being a very strong character with some very strong abilities Greninja not so much considered one of the weaker characters in the game. A Falco player, one of the best in the United States, and he just got spiked by a Terry. Same Terry that took out Anarchy literally minutes ago. UCF still up by two stocks. This guy is looking to rip this team apart single-handedly. That is, I mean, nuts, to say the very least. Absolutely absurd. That was a disgusting spike. I cannot believe that happened. Will you hold the microphone so I can sign this? <laughs> Sorry. For context, he's uh, he's got a fan. He's actually signing something. He's so excited. my voice for two minutes for 30 seconds maybe what was it like probably bliss we oh i was signing a mouse pad which is really cool i've never done that before nobody's ever asked me for a signature so i i'm gonna start blushing but i was i'm really excited about that and then he wants a picture can you take a picture of us yeah. i said is it bad she went no <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and take that as a yes turns out i can't tie a tie sitting down what do you think is the appropriate face to screen ratio for a valorant player face to screen like how close i sit yeah like how close player. should a player sit personally i play really really close i think uh it depends on your eyesight but for me i like playing close because it helps me focus on my crosshair is the value is the value of sitting close to the crosshair being the only thing in your line of sight yeah that's pretty much a main benefit of it it's so funny how close some of these guys sit oh my goodness what do you think is the healthy face to screen distance for a Valorant player. I think it's all kind of personal preference. I guess I would consider myself like pretty close when I play because sure. I like to like zone in on my crosshair. It is the second person to say that. It's all about the crosshair. And then what's up with the horizontal keyboard? I don't know. Like it just kind of fits like the form when I'm close to monitor. Like I don't know. It, it might sound cringy, but I like to like be one with my gun. You know? No, bro. I feel it. I feel it absolutely. What is going on, everybody? I am here with some UCF fans. How are we feeling about UCF? Let's go! Let's go! We've got a bunch of UCF fans in the crowd right now. UCF, they are up by a single game. They're looking to find their third and possibly final secure a spot moving forward. Things looking great for them against Northwood here today. This guy's playing Minecraft right now. He gives double building instead of placing the dirt. Pressure's on, man. Everybody's watching. Just kidding. Just me. Cameraman's not over here. Just kidding. He's behind you. There's actually always cameras on you if I'm around. Do you double build all of those? No excuses, bro. Your college esports Minecraft team. Absolutely rolled. L after L here. Let's hope UCF has a little better luck on stage, huh? What is going on, everybody? I am Septilins. I have the honor of welcoming you to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup here in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, that was good. That was good. Good content, good content. Welcome to ECAC Top Plays of the Week. This is Rod, your favorite host, back at it again with more stellar plays from Collegiate Esports. Special thanks to our partners at Esports U for the additional coverage. Now let's hop straight into it. Starting off this week at number 8, we have Torchy showing aerial dominance. 
they show that you're going to have to work a little bit harder if you want to get back on their stage. 